Hello and welcome back to McLaren Performance. England have won the Euros. It just took the women to do it. But what does that actually mean for the future of football? And how is the women's game now going to develop? If you're like me, I think over the past few years, the past few seasons, the women's game and the talk around the women's game has kind of creeped up on everybody. And its importance and, and kind of what it can be has shown itself just more and more in the past few years. I'm in a position where I work with, say, the Newcastle Women's Football, so I have that perspective from there. And I've, for three, four, three years, really, working there, I've seen the game develop in its popularity, especially during COVID. I think if it wasn't for the work I have been doing uh, with women's football, it would have come as a, a surprise to me to see this development but having worked in it, I have just that little bit more understanding of it and, and the struggle overall, really, with women and, and their attempts to play football. It's quite a story. It's quite interesting. It's quite an interesting history, one that a lot of people don't know. But one I think a lot of people should understand, especially when they at least try to criticise women's football. I think a lot of people criticise um, women's football in the way that they say it doesn't have that audience. It doesn't deserve to to be at a standard that men have it doesn't deserve to have that money within it because it doesn't have that audience it doesn't have that engagement which on the face of it is an understandable argument they have the equal opportunity to play to get that audience and they don't get it but the reality is i think and well, i know they are entitled to that audience in in many ways the history of women's football is one that is not often mentioned is that it was actually banned by the fa I think in 1921, uh, for 50 years. So for 50 years, women were not really officially allowed to play football. That was something that the FA put into place for no particular reason, really, at the end of the day, coming down to jealousy because at the time, the women's game was attracting crowds just as big, if not bigger, than the men's game. In fact, the highest attendance of a women's game back then was 53,000. When I learned that and understood that history, I had a much different perspective on women's football. Not that I was ever against it, but I definitely realised much more uh, the oppression that they faced. Because the reality is, if history had run its course, if, if women's football was never banned, if it was something that carried on the way that it was, we would be in a present now, we would be at a time where women's football would just have that same exposure as men. And that's really another criticism that women's football always faces, that the the ability, the game, the ability of the players, the talent that they have, the quality of the football is just not as good as the men's game. But when you look at it in the context of that history, it can it's much more forgiving. If they would have allowed that time, if they weren't banned, if the progress was still the same, they would have the coaching set up, they would have the pathways that they deserve. And the ability of the players, the ability of young girls playing from eight years old, say, being trained properly up until adulthood, they would be much better at playing football than what they are now. But right now, they just don't have that structure. There's no framework in place. There's no, say, a men's setup at a club like an academy where there's coaches for every age group. There's no setup like that, really, for women in football. And so you're going to see that difference inability i'm not saying that women will one day be just as good as men i think there's always those differences but there's still a possibility for women to develop much more to provide really really entertaining games of football which they already are doing already but they can be even better than that so when i see say like a simon jordan criticize women's football uh, for complaining for not having enough audience because in his opinion they probably don't deserve it because of their ability to play it's really a matter of uh, chicken or the egg you know which comes first you have to provide these women with the, the abilities with the the pathway so they can develop good football uh, develop entertaining football to then attract these audiences you can't say they, they're not attracting these audiences um, and not acknowledge the fact that they've been disadvantaged in lots of different ways to be able to do that in other ways where men have been encouraged and had coaching and had pathways and had unbelievable amounts of money put into it. There's such a difference between the two. There's You have to look at the women's game as a development, as something that in the future, with the right parts in place, will become something much bigger. And that's more so at the club level where there's still audiences 
being built because as you can see at the international level with say the England final uh, just the other day that was around I've got that here 87,000 in attendance at Wembley it's clearly a massive audience that want to watch women's football and you just can't argue against that it's just impossible 17 million watching I think the biggest sporting event if not just the thing that's been watched the most in 2022 so far so at that point what can you say to to not let them have what they want <laughs> women's football at a very high level it's what they deserve it's what they fought for they won the euros they've proven that they can do these things they've proven they can inspire uh, a younger generation of girls and they can inspire a country also they've proven themselves to do that so we need to step aside and build the structure for them so they can play better football. And I'm convinced that will happen now because an event like that, I think that final, that audience winning that tournament, I think will ignite something in people that then want to fund that game. It, will, it is the spark, I think, for the development in the next few years. I think it's unavoidable because sadly it's the case that people will see that really and go, there is money to be made. <laughs> And that's what will happen now. There is opportunity there, not just for women to be inspired and to create such an amazing thing in that, but for more business-minded people, there's money to be made in it. And that's definitely what they'll be seeing. What I see really is an opportunity for football to be done right. We often look at the men's game now, and I think there is a lot to criticise in lots of different areas things I probably won't even go into now. But with the women's team, with the with the women's football in general, there's something much different going on. Just look, say when I was watching the final, look at the crowds, look at the people in the crowds, look at the, the behaviour of the people in the crowds, the type of people in the crowds, young girls being inspired, enjoying themselves, families coming together, watching football, no aggression, no violence. <laughs> Imagine that at a football game, no violence. It's fantastic. It's such a demographic you can reach. And it just, if you look at it kind of shrewdly in a business sense, it, why would you not put money into it? Because there's so many people who want to watch it because there's so many different types of people. It appeals to so much more than just the, the, just the man, <laughs> just the normal man. It is more now to that. And there's more within football. For the past 100 years, football has lost that side to it. It has cut off a demographic of people and not allowed those people to be a part of it because there are people in football that think it is just for a certain demographic and that is it. Whether they like it or not, the money is speaking, the audience is speaking and that is changing massively. That doesn't mean that change is going to happen overnight because there are still people in football, of course, who still think like that. And it will take a lot of time for these things to change. So while the future holds a great development for women's football, they're going to have many more opportunities. It's all going to be fantastic. One word of warning from me, uh, which I think is very important, is they are going to face a lot of harsh criticism, more so than men's football will get. You already see that already with the ability that they play with. There's a lot of criticism of that. I think there'll be a lot more criticism where people can find it. And I think players, coaches, people that represent women's football have to hold themselves to a very high standard. I don't think they should have to do that. It's not right that they have to do that. But they're still battling to, for the rights, really, to play at a certain level. And to do that, they need to be at a top, top level with hardly any criticism at all because any amount of criticism that can be found will be found and will be exploited and used to try and talk down the women's game and what it can actually possibly be because the oppression that existed let's say 100 years ago when that ban uh, was put in place i think in 1921 that oppression really still exists to this day it's just changed in how it's approached it's not the conversations that are happening in front of the camera now it's very important what conversation are happening behind the camera of course everyone is very supportive in front of those cameras but the big decisions are being made behind it the struggle with women's football now is not at face value the struggle is what is happening behind the scenes what is being implemented at the international level at club level 
what opportunities are they being given? What facilities are they being given? What coaching facilities are they being given? What time are they being given? That needs to be looked at. That needs to be improved. That needs to be worked on. That is real improvement and that is what they deserve, not accolades, empty accolades. They need real solid process now and real work and real money put into it. That's what matters and holding that back that's the real oppression now. Like I believe Ian Wright has been saying on TV about the uh, women's game, it's talking about how uh, there needs to be set up within the score system also. I think that is true. I think young girls need to be having that opportunity just to play football. And when they are talented, then given the opportunity to work with better coaches and from there given a pathway to develop towards a professional career. It's great that there's all this noise about the women's game and it's getting all this uh, popularity. But the future of women's football is dependent on putting all these boring processes in place. That's showing real support for the women's game. And that's what needs to really be done now. Because right now, it's empty words. They need to become something more. Other than that, it's great to see this development. And it's so interesting having worked in women's football to now see the future that it can possibly have. Because there's no one goes there who, who works so hard and play a lot of football and for them not to get much for that it's nice to know that there's young girls now who can work hard and can earn something from it it's just important that that happens and that this actually leads to something more leads to a proper future anyway yeah thank you for watching and listening just an episode today i thought i'd do for a monday i think i might move to mondays i'm not sure um, but maybe just do it whenever I want i saw the women's game i felt inspired to talk about it i think there's a lot to say about it and so I just wanted to do this little episode. I hope it was not too boring. I think it's interesting that knowing, talking about this sort of stuff isn't going to be so interesting for so many people. But I guess that's why it is then important to talk about it because it should be interesting. If you want, comment what you think of the women's game, of its development. Is it important? Is it not? Are you interested in it? Are you not interested in it? What needs to change? What needs to happen? What would make you interested in it? Uh, what have you heard of it? Anything. Anything you want to talk about comment below and I'll take a look. If you like the episode, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe if you want. Uh, if you're listening on anything, give us a good review. It always helps with everything. And I will see you again uh, on Wednesday. See you then.